All right, so to get started now, um, what we'll do first is go through a quick run through of what Open Active is all about. There's a mixed group of active partnerships on the webinar today, uh, a group, uh, some people who have been very involved with Open Active today and some people who may not have heard of Open Active or not entirely know what we're about. So we'll go a little bit back to basics at the beginning. Um, and we'll explain what it is that Open Active is and what it's about. And we'll talk about uh, what we're currently up to at the moment. Uh, we'll then have a couple of examples from some active partnerships on the call. Um, and then we'll be going through how you can all get involved and how we can help you to get involved. If you have any questions that you want me to discuss on the webinar, please do use the Slido link. So that's slido.com. You need to open a new window for that. And the reference is G401. And if you're having any technical issues or anything else like that, please do use the messaging on the zoom link and my colleague nick is here with me as well so he can help with any issues that you might have um, he's also the technical engagement lead on open active so if any of you have any particularly technical questions that come up that i'm not able to answer he will be on standby to help with that hi everyone and that was nick uh, so just to introduce myself, I'm Tara, I'm the engagement lead on Open Active. So it's my job to engage with everyone within the Open Active community and help people to get involved with Open Active and link people up together and help to progress the initiative. Um, before we start properly, um, just for anyone who's not aware, Open Active is a community-led initiative. It's funded by Sport England and it's stewarded by the Open Data Institute. So Nick and I both work for the Open Data Institute purely on Open Active. So to get us started, I'm going to start with a video which some of you may have seen already. Open data has the potential to revolutionise our industry. It can attract more customers, make your activities easier to find and book, and encourage more people to get active. Simply put, open data means you can reach more customers. Basically free marketing. Let me show you how. The travel industry shares data really well. This means that websites like lastminute.com, Skyscanner and Expedia get up to date and accurate information about flights and hotels from most providers easily. These services offer variety and convenience to consumers. And as a result, the travel providers reach way more customers. Open Active wants to do the same for our industry. Our mission is to help more people get active. We're a community of organizations and individuals, backed by the government, working together to help promote the benefits of open data and help create common standards so that we're all speaking the same language. To be clear, open data means information like timings, prices, location, availability, descriptions, and images. Details that are probably already public, not personal information about your customers. Sounds great, but what does it all look like? Well, you may already use a booking system to list your activities online. Opening your data is usually just as simple as ticking a box in the settings. Innovators and businesses can use your data in amazing ways, like featuring your activities and facilities in apps and websites that attract millions of users or through communities and services that engage local people, but also in new, incredible ways that we can't imagine yet. Using your data, they're automatically kept up to date without any extra effort from you. Discovering and booking your activities will be easier than ever. 
so many have already begun to embrace open data and are reaping the benefits. Whether you're an individual or an organization, open your data. Increase your engagement. Grow your attendance. And help more people get active. Okay, so hopefully that made sense to everyone. I will go through a bit more of the detail of what Open Active is all about in a moment. But just before we get to that, I just want to make sure that everyone has Slido open so that they can ask questions if they want to. So if you go there now, you'll see that there is there should be a poll that's going live now. So if each of you could go in there and just submit which active partnership you represent so we can see the variety of partnerships we have on the call. Great, okay, so we've got a nice variety there. There's still a couple of coming in. I think there's about 27 people on the call. So I'm just seeing if, how much the numbers go up by here. Okay. Thanks, everyone. All right. So just to explain a little bit more about what Open Active is and what we're about. Um, the reason why we exist is to help affect behavior change in the physical activity sector. We all know, as it's the remit of all of our roles, uh, to increase physical activity amongst the public and we know that behavior change is really hard and we know that there are a multitude of different factors that affect people's behavior and choices and opportunities to become physically active so whether someone is capable of doing that physical activity both physically and mentally whether they believe that there are opportunities available for them to do that opportunity uh, to do that physical activity and whether those opportunities are visible to them or not and whether they feel motivated to do that activity do they think that, that activity is right for them is it something that they are going to enjoy is it something that's going to be suitable for them And for different people, there are different factors that affect all three of these things here. So we could have just built one big activity finder to make opportunities available for everyone. However, because there are so many different use cases for physical activity, there isn't a one size fits all for what people want to do. So if you are a parent looking for something for your children to do in some holidays, you won't be looking for the same things as someone in their 70s who is just looking to increase their mobility, for example. So what we do is work on making it easier to, for people to see the opportunities that are available. And we do that by building open standards 
that people can use to open their data in a standardized way. So we help organizations on the left hand side of this slide. So these are just examples, obviously. Uh, so you've got leisure operators, you'll have national governing bodies, you'll have independent activity providers, you'll have lots of different organizations who provide those physical activities and we help them to open up their opportunities so that they can feed into the different activity finders or data users on the right hand side of thing here. So we're helping open up the opportunities to enable other organizations to provide the motivating tools that members of the public need to help create that behavior change. And to be clear, we're talking about essentially timetable data here. We're not talking about any kind of personal information. And we're also helping bookings to go back from the motivating side back into the opportunities. And just to compare to other industries, why we think that open data is so important for our sector um, in terms of helping those opportunities and helping change that behavior. If we look at the takeaway sector, for example, it's grown by 34% between 2009 and 2016. And if you think of apps like Deliveroo and Uber Eats and Just Eat, all of those apps require open feeds from the equivalent of an activity provider. So it will be the restaurants in there in order to make that app work for you and make it as convenient as possible for you to get a takeaway. Another example that we can use here is the travel sector, transport sector, sorry. Uh, so as an example, Transport for London opened up all of their opportunity data. So bus timetables, train timetables. And as a result, that has created 130 million pounds of benefits and savings per year in London. So if you've used something like City Mapper as an example, you'll see how much easier it is to be able to get from A to B using open data. And there are still other opportunities with open data and with open active, uh, not just about making it as easy to book a squash call as a takeaway or a hotel room, but there are other ways that this open data can be used and we're trying to reduce barriers to innovation in the sector as well. Whether it's active travel, whether it's helping people get healthier, whether it's increasing accessibility for people with accessibility issues, all of those things and others that we haven't conceived yet. So to give you an idea of what can result from opening data, this is an example from Public Health England's Change for Life campaign. They have built an activity finder that uses open data. And so what that means is for all of the activity providers who have opened up data feeds for their opportunities, Public Health England is able to aggregate all of those feeds and pull out the relevant activities for children and put them into their activity finder, which has a huge nationwide reach and means that for each of those activity providers, their own marketing reach has been multiplied thousands, hundreds of thousands of times. And what this means for the end user is they are able to find different opportunities available to them much more easily. And again, just to clarify what type of data we're talking about here, we're talking about events, we're talking about sessions, we're talking about facilities like badminton courts, and we're talking about data properties like the time of the session, the price, the location, how many slots are still available. Uh, is there a description so you can decide whether that activity is right for you? 
is there an image to help inspire someone to go along and take part? Are there any gender restrictions? Are there any age range restrictions? What's the difficulty level? All of these things play a role in affecting someone's behavior change. And this is just an example of our status page on the website. So a common misconception is that we own the open data feeds. We don't own any of the data. Each of the activity providers own their own data feeds. And what they do is they create a data set site. We just have a directory of those on our website to make it easy to find. And each of these data set sites are openly licensed. So anyone can use that opportunity data as long as they attribute it back to the activity providers. So you can see some examples of organizations there who have opened up their data. And for anyone who has concerns about opening this data, this is probably still the data that's on a class timetable on a website. It's just that instead of having to scrape that data from the website, it's available as an open feed. So that's kind of a basis of what Open Active is and what we do. Um, so just to give you guys an update on where we are now in the process, a couple of years into Open Active, we identified that there are some challenges that the initiative still needs to address. So in the past, we focused purely on getting organizations to open up the data. But in terms of those organizations seeing the value of having open up that data, there needs to be more data users engaged in actually using those open data feeds. So we've shifted our focus from purely getting more data opened up to getting the data used in a variety of ways to meet the different use cases of the end participants. Uh, commercial impacts are still unknown and we'll be running a booking pilot later on. So this is for uh what might be aggregators who take a fee for advertising your sessions um, and some take a fee some don't public health england as an example don't sport england with this girl can won't um, but there are others that do and it may be that they offer a unique selling point uh, so we need to test that going forward and there's still a lack of, of certainty about long-term value and sustainability, which is something that we are working on at the moment. And in terms of coverage, we still need to increase geographic coverage. And I think that will always be something that needs to be improving continuously. Uh, we need to look at a different range of activity types. Uh, to start with, we had quite a heavy focus on leisure operators because of the sheer volume of sessions that they put on but there are many activity types that are not covered by the likes of leisure operators um, and that's one of the reasons we're currently running a use case on outdoors activities which i'll talk about in a little bit more detail and we're aware that our, there are still some gaps in the open active standards for opening up your data so we are currently working on root standards and we'll also be working on accessibility and other things going forward. And we're aware that in terms of capability, there's still a fair amount of reliance uh, on the team who work purely on Open Active uh, to help organizations to integrate lots of different data feeds. Um, and organizations still need a fair amount of support to publish quality data. And there's still decisions to be made about what roles different organizations play in the ecosystem, um, which is a large part of why I'm talking to you guys today, because we believe that active partnerships play a pretty vital role in the ecosystem of Open Active, but it's up to that community to decide what role they want to play. It is a community-led initiative. So these are all things that we're working on. And the way that we decided to focus on these things, because Open Active has funding from Sport England until March 2021, is that we needed to focus on very specific areas if we were going to solve these challenges. And that's why we are delivering specific use cases. So the idea is that these use cases will solve particular problems 
like the ones that I've specified on the previous slide, or take advantages or take advantage of opportunities that are currently relevant. They were also about helping us to learn about what works well and what doesn't work well, so that we can pass on these learnings to the community. And it also helps us to establish which use of open active data needs support from us and which can grow organically by itself. So the use case that we are currently working on is our outdoors use case. And if any of you are signed up to the newsletter, you might have seen the recent newsletter that went out along with a blog on what we're doing with the outdoors use case. So we focus on a key data user who can show value for activity providers who open up their data. And for the outdoors, this is Ordnance Survey with their Get Outside campaign which leads up to Get Outside Day on the 29th of September. So they are building an activity finder for all outdoor activities and routes. So as part of that, we recognize that the routes data is not currently covered by Open Active Standards. So we've been working to build the standards for routes with a lot of input from the community organizations like uh, National Trust, Canals and Rivers Trust, uh, Forestry Commission, uh, British Cycling and so on. And in the meantime, I've been communicating the outdoors use case to as many potential stakeholders in this use case as possible and encouraging all outdoor activity providers to open up their data so that they can take advantage of this campaign and the reach that this campaign has as well as identifying other data users who might want to use this data um, and who can also benefit from this use case. So here are just some slides to give you an idea of, of what we're doing here. So Get Outside, it won the campaign of the year uh, last year from UK Active. Uh, they currently have 250,000 pages of content reaching over a million people a month. So you get an idea of the reach that they have with their website and what they're hoping to have with their activity finder. So for each of these organizations who are opening up their outdoor activities, that's a potential million people a month that they are able to reach that they may not have been able to do otherwise. And you can see that Again, it's an industry collaboration for Ordnance Survey, and you can see the types of organizations who are involved there. And this, as I mentioned, will culminate in National Get Outside Day. Uh, this year is on the 29th of September, and we have some stats here on Get Outside Day from last year as well. You can see there are some pretty impressive figures there. So that's one that we're currently working on and I would encourage any of you who see the benefit in getting involved in the outdoors use case to let me know and get and see how you can get involved. Um, but also wanted to let you guys know what else we have coming up over the next few months. Uh, so one of these, as I mentioned, uh, the commercial impacts of Open Active are still unknown and we need to test these. So we will be running some booking pilots with aggregators or third parties and as part of that we'll be supporting the activity providers who want to work with a third party um, as well as the system provider that they use so assuming they don't have their own custom built system uh, they may be using something like legend or gladstone or sport suite or sport 80 um, any of those systems, as well as the third party, the data user, to implement our new booking specification and identify commercial models that are mutually beneficial for all three parties. So some of those might be uh, non-commercial uh, organizations like Public Health England who want to integrate booking for Change for Life, or it might be something that is fully commercial like Move GB. Um, and it's worth pointing out that opening opportunity data does not mean that there is a booking 
commercial arrangement with any third party. They can just use the opportunities on their website. But in order to book onto those without the booking specification, they would need to go back to your websites to actually book onto a session. The booking pilots is a separate stage and implementing the booking specification, the license is not that just anyone can use that feed. It's a lot more protected there. Uh, another area that we are looking to focus on in the coming months is well, it's a combination of uh, long-term sickness and disability and we will be combining that under an accessibility use case. So we are planning to work with the Richmond group on the campaign that they're currently running with Sport England to support people with long-term health conditions um, and we will also be working with Parasport who have an activity finder for people with dis physical disabilities. Uh, so for both of those things, we are aware that we need to improve accessibility within the open active standards so that the data that is opened up is useful for the likes of Parasport and the Richmond Group of Charities. Um, and we need to raise awareness of this amongst uh, data publishers so that the information that is opened up has the level of data quality required so that someone going on to Parasport who has very specific needs on what data they need to make a decision about taking part in an activity, that those data fields are there and of a good enough quality. And we are likely to be working with Sport England on This Girl Can. Um, they are looking to build something for January next year, which will obviously have, will be another national nationwide campaign uh, focusing on getting more women and girls physically active. Again, we're talking about a campaign with a big brand awareness here. So increasing the reach fairly significantly for activity providers. Um, but we do have a question from Anonymous. How do we open data about routes that we hold so that it can be used on Go Outside? Ah, thank you, Rachel. <laughs> um, so the route specification uh, that is currently uh, out for review at the moment. It's just been built. Um, so if you are interested in opening up uh, data about routes, please uh, get in touch afterwards. There's also a link later on in the presentation to join the W3C group, which is the discussion group about our standards. Um, so we, I will show the link to that as well later on. So from a practical perspective, the roots work is a, it's a bit of developer time probably um, on whatever application you're currently using, um, where your roots are displayed, if they're on a website somewhere, for example, already. Um, so, uh, so yeah, we can definitely talk you through what that looks like. And that's what Tara is kind of referencing. Put, put us in touch with the developers and we can do that. It is worth pointing out that the uh, roots standard is our newest standard and it's not finalized yet. So that is something that's a little bit less seamless at the moment as we work through that one. Okay, Hazel's having some issues with her microphone. So I'm going to move forward. Uh, Chris, are you there and able to talk us through your slides? I'm here, can you hear me? I can hear you, thanks Chris. Great, so um, at London Sport, we've been working for Imperactive for quite a while now. So today I'm going to talk through two of the products that we've been developing. Uh, the first of those is Open Sessions. So this is a website which any sports club, activity provider or individual can use to publish information about their activity sessions. So it's mainly for providers who don't have their own booking systems. And so they don't currently have a way to publish their sessions as open data. If we go to the next slide, um, you'll see that it should be a relatively simple process to use. So you go to opensessions.io and register for an account. And then once you've had your account set up, you can create and publish all of the different sessions that you run. So you put in the activity type, the venue, the time, the meeting instructions, an image, um, contact information. And then you should simply be able to then publish those activities. Uh, they'll be formatted to the open data standards. Uh, and then published uh, as an activity feed. 
So then you should see them uh, start to appear on activity finders such as Get Active or any of the ones that are run by organizations like Played, Playways, um, or Play by Decathlon. If we go to the, the next slide, the second product that we've been developing and working on is Active. So that is our uh, activity finder. Um, it's powered by open data. Um, and so we'll show all the sessions from open sessions, but also those from leisure centers and NGBs and the other sources of data. And that's an activity finder website, which is good for um, kind of searching if you know what you're looking for. And what we've been testing recently is actually taking some of that, that open data and using it directly within Facebook Messenger to try and engage with a, a less active audience. Um, people who are perhaps a bit earlier on in the behavior change journey. So we use that data within Messenger to try and support and encourage and engage people to find something that's right for them and help them kind of come over there. There may be concerns or, or worries about becoming active. So um, it's a, a use case that we're really starting to develop and, and think has got a lot of potential going forward, but it relies on having good access to information about the sessions that are happening. Um, and so open data helps us to do that. If you're interested in any of the, the products that, that, that we work on here at London Sport, then get in touch. I'm at chris.norfield at londonsport.org. Thanks, Tara. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for that. Um, I believe we can now unmute Hazel. And she can talk. Hello. Can you hear me? can hear you. Hi, Hazel. Thanks for your patience. Yay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Technical issues. Um, yeah, I guess Tara, uh, we spoke on the phone this morning and just asked to give an update on what we were doing in Greater Manchester. Um, so I guess our approach was focusing on the leisure trusts and the massive opportunities, uh, opportunity data that they had. Um, and we're lucky that we've got kind of GM Active here in Greater Manchester, so they're used to working together and that shared way of working. Um, and so it's been a slow process and I think it's really helped to have that support nationally with the system providers um, and that uh, support to reinforce how important it is. Um, so I think out of the 12 trusts we're up to around six or seven that are open now and the next steps really are using that data in an activity finder to test it and show the value of it um, and importantly improve the quality of it. Um, and then I guess linking into the other slide around the um, get outside day, I think our next uh, focus will be around how we can um, improve kind of walking groups and walking sessions that are available because it's something that's a real focus for Greater Manchester in terms of reaching an active population. Um, and, then, and then lastly, I guess in, in future, an ideal world, we'd be able to I uh, use this um, within social prescribing and <laughs> with long-term health conditions and influence that space as well. Um, but I suppose the main learning really is what is around um, everybody agrees in principle at the start, but then it takes a while to actually materialise and we're starting to see that now. Um, and I think having that incentive and timeline around when the day is actually going to be used has really helped to push people. Um, and certainly there was a lot of learning around including it in contract negotiations from GLL in, in Manchester. <clears throat> um, and lastly, I think that myth about aggregators coming in and stealing commercial profits and things has been a real sticking point, which I think keeps resurfacing. So it's how we can maybe feed back from that booking pilot, kind of the learnings and reassure again that that's not the case. Um, but that was it really for me, unless there's anything else you want me to add, Tara? No, that was great. Thanks, Hazel. You, I mean, you've, you've covered a lot of points there. Um, some of them, uh, as we mentioned, we, we talked about already with the outdoors use case. Um, and some of them I'll come to in a little bit more detail uh, as we go through the different ways that active partnerships can get involved. Um, but, you know, like you said, some of the challenges that you faced are around the uncertainty around booking and things like that um, and also how long it takes to get organizations to do things which is why we're you know, talking about the the next use cases that we've got coming up uh, for the rest of this year and going forward to, uh, to make it clear and to get everyone prepared for that um, so I think and social driving is definitely one of those as well yeah, I think the next step of demonstrating that value um, will be really important just to keep the momentum going with those that have opened the data. Yeah, agreed. 
All right, thank you, Hazel. Um, thank you. Does anyone have any questions for Chris or Hazel before we move on to the next slide? Okay, so I've got a few slides here of the different ways that active partnerships can get involved. Um, and we'll start from sort of a fairly light touch and uh, move on to the sort of more in-depth ways that we think active partnerships can get involved and sort of take ownership of parts of the community going forward. So there are a myriad of options here and we're not asking every active partnership to do what uh, Greater Sport have done, to do what London Sport have done, because that would be a pretty big ask. Um, but just from a, a very basic level, uh, we could really use your support in spreading the word about Open Active and the work that we're doing. So amplifying the calls to action that we have, um, letting organize, other organizations know about the use cases that we're doing. Um, these use cases are designed to benefit as many organizations as possible. So although the outdoors use case focuses on ordnance survey as kind of the key data user, there are many other data users who will also benefit from that data. Um, I spoke to EMD the other day who are also interested in the outdoors data and know that ordnance survey is a real sort of value add. So they are helping other organizations to open up their data for ordnance survey but so that they can also use that data for their own class finder as well. Um, as part of spreading the word, um, it's obviously our responsibility to give you guys content that you can reuse. So an example we have here uh, is the blog that we published on the outdoors use case. So you can see here, it's just a three minute read with some information from Ordnance Survey. Uh, the blogs are all accessible on our website. Um, and there are other content that we can use. So if you do have questions um, about spreading the news on uh, Open Active and the different use cases that we're working on, then please just ask us. Um, and if there's not relevant materials available for you, we will create those and share those openly so that all of you can use that. So the next step for getting involved, um, well, it's not a next step, but it's sort of another way that you can get involved, is to help get new systems on board. So in most cases, organizations don't have their own custom built system. They're using an off the shelf system. Um, and in order to open up their opportunities, that system has to have built open active functionality into that. So. For those of you who've done any work with us before, you'll know that we've done a lot of work with the likes of Legend and with Gladstone. Um, and we are talking to organizations like Sport Suite and Sport 80. Um, and for a lot of these systems, they will only see the benefit in doing this if their customers and clients want this available. Um, so it's important, you know, with Sport Suite as an example. Uh, their feed is not currently openly licensed. It's a non-commercial license, which doesn't work for the likes of Public Health England for their Change for Life campaign or for Ordnance Survey with their Get Outside campaign. Um, so if we are to encourage them to change the license on that, as an example, it needs the peer pressure, if you like, from their, their customers and clients who are the ones who are going to see the real value and benefit in that. Um, and another way to incentivize systems to build the open active functionality is to get open active requirements into local authority contracts, which is something that Hazel mentioned we did in Manchester. Um, and that got GLL really on board, which is really the, the key factor in getting legend, which is a huge system to build open active functionality into their system and actually become a huge advocate for open active. And we have a very uh, simple document which is linked into this presentation which will be shared out to everyone. But again, if you can't find the link, you can ask us and you'll see there's a, a template document there 
for getting open active into local authority contracts. Um, and it's something that we do ask the support of active partnerships on fairly regularly because uh, you guys do have tend to have a good relationship with the local authorities that you work with um, and it, it makes that process a lot smoother and easier with the network that you guys naturally have. So then the other way that uh, we would like active partnerships to get involved is to help the smaller activity providers. Um, it's a lot easier for us to talk to the big activity providers, the big and the medium sized ones. Um, there aren't nearly as many of them. Um, and it's much easier for us to build a relationship with them. We are a small team ourselves. We don't have that many resources um, at hand to have all these conversations. Uh, with the smaller activity providers, there are lots of them. Um, and you guys will have much better relationships with the ones in your regions than we could ever manage by ourselves. Um, and we do recognize that barriers to entry on Open Active are the highest for the smaller activity providers where they don't necessarily have a system in place. So if you can't, as an active partnership, offer them a system yourself, um, we would ask for your help to encourage them to take up a free or low-cost system. So Chris uh, mentioned there, London Sport have built open sessions. There are other free or low-cost systems out there as well um, that make it possible and easy for small activity providers who don't necessarily have a system themselves uh, to make their opportunities open so that they can actually benefit from the free marketing um, that the data users provide um, and it also helps your local residents to have more of an opportunity to find out everything that's available for them to do not just the uh, bigger activity provider opportunities like the leisure operators but also the smaller the niche ones that might be a lot more attractive to certain parts of the population so again just keep encouraging you guys to ask any questions if you have any do you have other examples of free or low cost systems? Uh, so there are systems like Bookwen who charge a very low uh, price model. I think it's something like nine pounds a month or something like that. Um, if anyone has heard of other free or low cost systems, please let us know and we will put those systems on our website as well. Um, do know that uh, Sport England is also doing an exercise to look at the different systems that are available um, and I'm working with them on that so when that is finished that piece of research we will share that openly as well. So a slightly uh, bigger ask for you guys is if you have any opportunities that you deliver yourselves then please open them up so that you can market them more widely um, and those opportunities can feed into other activity finders. So if you use something like Sports Suite, uh, please encourage them to become compliant with open active standards. They have made some steps, um, but they're not quite there. As I mentioned, there are issues with the licensing, things like that. Um, if you use another system, uh, then please speak to them about building the functionality for you to open up your data. If you've got your own system that you want to open up data from um, and you want support with any technical queries, we do have a drop-in session that Nick hosts every fortnight where he can talk you through any technical queries you have. Um, and you'll see there's a link on this slide here, which if I click on that, that will show you the next sessions coming up for technical queries and you just need to book onto that. It's completely free um, and there's an hour of Nick's time available to talk through any technical queries that you may have. Um, and if you do have an activity finder already that you use to support uh, local activity providers, um, then again, please do make that open and available so that as well as supporting them to put their activities on your own activity finder again you can help them market their sessions more widely 
Um, and again, Nick will can support with technical queries that you might have with that. Um, and the other way that you can get involved with Open Active is to use Open Data. So if you currently have something like an activity directory, which is not live and it's, it could be quite cumbersome to keep up to date, um, then you do have the opportunity to make it a live up to date activity finder. Um, so obviously that would enhance the experience for your residents because they will be able to see live data and it you know, makes it easier for them to get active. Um, and it also helps to support small activity providers that might feed into your, what might currently be an activity directory, becoming an activity finder to help them market their activities. Um, and again, we can support with any technical queries that you might have on using open data fields, uh, open data feeds within your own activity finders. Um, and its final slide from me here is how can we support you to be more involved in Open Active? So these are the different ways that we think we can support you. So we provide literature and updates on our blog, on our website, on our monthly newsletter, and on our fortnightly engagement calls. So if you haven't already signed up to the newsletter, there is a link in here, which is on our website so you can join the newsletter mailing list there if you want to get those updates and you don't already um, if you have not joined one of our fortnightly engagement calls and you would like to going forward then please drop us an email and we can put you on the diary invite for that it's an open engagement call so anyone is welcome to join that and we just talk on a bit more of a regular basis about what's happened in the last fortnight and what we have coming up. So if any of you feel that you want to join that, um, it's not a mandatory thing. If you sign up for one, you don't have to attend all of them. Um, just let us know if it's something that's of interest to you. Um, we also try and foster sort of a community spirit on Open Active um, and we use Slack as the forum to do that. So, if you use Slack, but you're not on the open active channel, then you can sign up to that here. Um, and it's very simple to use. It's essentially a live chat, but it allows you to ask anyone in the community who's on Slack uh, about any questions that you might have, or if you need any support from other members of the community. If you do need us to advise you on any technical queries, as I mentioned, there is a drop-in call that happens every fortnight with Nick. If you have any urgent technical queries, then you can obviously drop us a line as well on our support email address, and we will get back to you as quickly as possible on that. And it may be that we organize a, you know, a quick screen share to go through something as well. Um, and if you want to get involved in building the new open active standards or implementing new standards, then you can join the W3C group. You don't have to be particularly technical to do that. We're, we're building the actual functionality, um, but we do need input from the community uh, in order to build the right standards. So with the roots, standards for example there are many fields that we may not have considered without input from British Cycling or Forestry Commission and so on and again everyone is welcome to join this is an open community that anyone can contribute to and the meetings for that community happen every fortnight and you can see if you want upcoming meetings what's happening um, and you can review previous meetings that have happened with recordings and notes that get written up after those things. And if you do have any other random questions, um, maybe they don't come to you today or they are relevant in the future, then please drop those at hello at openactive.io. Um, if you're already in contact with me, then of course, please continue speaking with me. Um, but in case I'm not around and you have an urgent question, if you drop it to that email address, then anyone who's around in the team should be able to help you with those. 
So last few minutes for any questions that people have. Uh, question from Rich at Active Humber. Um, apologies if I missed this info, but wondered in the case of the Change for Life Activity Finder, has there been any evidence that it has helped increase uptake? Um, Rich, it's a little bit early to say with that. Um, the live version of the Activity Finder only went live, I think, last week. Um, so we wouldn't have any numbers for that just yet. Um, but I believe the, the marketing and the media spend around that is happening now. So it will be a few weeks to see with that one. Um, I should have mentioned for each of the use cases, we will be writing up an evaluation at the end of each one. Um, and Change for Life is, is kind of the first one that's wrapping up now. Um, so we will be writing up our learnings from the work that we've done with Public Health England on Change for Life to find out what has worked well, what hasn't, and, and take those learnings forward into future use cases. But also for anyone who does want to do something themselves, not necessarily with um, ODI support, or it might be, um, but so that everyone is a bit able to see the lessons learned for that. And yes, Adrian, we'll give you 30 seconds to talk at the end, no problem. And in case there's any other questions, I will probably pass over to Adrian now. I, it was just to, to say thanks really to, to Sarah and the team for putting together the webinar today. Um, hopefully it's been really informative. Um, I think there's uh, various ideas, various calls to action depending on where you are with your partnership. So hopefully um, you've, you've picked up a few ideas. The, the request from me as well is that you, you share information as you go along. There's, there's no right and wrong here. There's, there's just different ways of approaching it. So as you get stuck in and you do do things, please share in terms of what's worked, what hasn't, what might be some of the, the barriers and challenges so that, that Tara and the team and other active partnerships can learn from that. So, um, so that's what we're keen to do, that we make this uh, an interactive exercise between uh, open active and the active partnerships, but also between active partnerships as well. So, um, so that was it really, Tara, just to, uh, to say thanks and just to encourage that interaction. Um, the final thing, um, I got uh, a, a, an email from Staffordshire from Jude. I don't want to drop you in it, Jude, but um, I know that you've been particularly, or your partnership's been particularly active. Um, and if, if you're still on the call, and if you are up for just saying a few words around some of the things that you've been doing, that, that would be quite useful as well. So, uh, so that was it from me, Tara. Thanks a lot. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi. Um, not a great deal um, more to add um, than the previous two speakers. Um, as, as an organisation, we have um, we're working currently with Played to establish an activity finder, um, and really the kind of uh, driving force behind that was um, we felt it was something that was really needed in terms of supporting our workforce locally. Mm -hmm. So through the um, advent of uh, social prescribing and the work we've been doing with Public Health England around the, the activity champions, um, uh, courses that we've been supporting in delivery, we were really hearing from, certainly from the health sector, that there was a real need for a mechanism locally that they could direct people to, to find um, uh, activities that would be suitable for a whole range of, of users. So we're right at the beginning of that process. We've just signed a contract with Played, um, and we have an event on the 11th of September here in Staffordshire where we've invited all of our um, the bigger local providers, so Leisure Trust, some of our commercial providers, um, some of our larger community organisations who deliver a number of sessions across our patch as it were um, and the thrust of that day is to talk to them as you have today about why it's important to um, open their data and um, what that means for them as organisations um, 
so yeah if anyone on the call wants to come along to that day um, you're more than uh, um, welcome to do so um, I'm sure Adrian can share my contact details in fact I could probably just type it in here as we talk um, into the question section but please just drop me a line um, and yeah it's just a, a start of a very exciting journey for us I think we hope ultimately we'll be able to use this as a platform to um, to do all kinds of things from a behaviour change perspective. Um, but we're just starting off, as I said, with this um, activity finder in the first instance, and we'll we'll see how we go. Gee, it'd be great if we can have a chat after the call as well, um, and we can help amplify the message that you've got the work that you're doing. Um, so you yeah, but as many people find out about it as possible. Yeah, that would be great. Um, I've put my uh, email address onto the question section, so if anyone wants to drop me a line. Um, the, the only other thing I'd say, Adrian, I know you mentioned about um, uh, sharing learning, and that, uh, you know that's something that we're certainly keen to do. In terms of it, the best avenue to do that from an active partnerships perspective, have you got any thoughts about that? Yeah, well, uh, probably we could have a chat offline. Obviously, the hub is one way of doing it, and you know we could create a, an open active group on the hub, which which means that we can easily do that. Um, the, obviously, the other way is through the forums that we've got. You know, with the directors group, we could bring it up as an issue or or a, a discussion topic there. Um, in some regions, marketing leads get together, so that might be uh, another forum. Um, mm -hmm. and, and using it in relation to things like the convention. So there are various standing forums where we can build it in. Uh, we could use the, the hub, and if there are other out ideas out there, then um, certainly be happy to hear about them and, and try and ad adapt the, the structures that we've got. For that Adrian, thanks to you, and thanks as well to Chris and Hazel for speaking earlier. Um, as I mentioned, if anyone else does have any questions, if you have questions for Adrian, then please get in touch with him directly. If you have questions for me, then you have the hello at openactive.io email address here, um, and we'll happily support you guys on anything that you want to do with open active um, and as i said we will share the recording and the slides um, after the webinar is finished this, the recording will take a little bit longer to send out but we can send out the slides pretty quickly all right thank you for joining everyone and have a great day